Hey guys, welcome to episode 12. Wow, 12 episodes. Um, what a week, um, what a month really. We really hope you're being mindful of your mental health and taking time to take care of you and uh, just uh, catching up on, tr well, trying to catch up on all the things that are going on, but still um, taking care of your mental health. Um, it's been six months since we started engaging um, with the topics and with everything that's been going on. Um, and we are very grateful for everything that you guys have done. Every interaction that you've um, had with us in the last six months, we're very grateful for it. We actually can't believe it's been six months since we started. I remember when we, <laughs> I remember when we first uh, introduced the conversation of actually doing this. Um, and from going, getting from that point to this point has been interesting, but also quite rewarding. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to thank everybody, regardless of where you were, where you are in the process. If you've been with us since inception, since we, if we came to you and asked you questions about, you know, what we wanted to do, we appreciate you. If this is your first episode with us, we also appreciate you because we know that you could have spent your time doing other things. Um, so we appreciate that. And if you fall anywhere in the middle, you just found out about us recently or you know you're catching up um we are grateful for whatever interaction that you've had with us in the past six months um we've decided that this is going to be our last episode for the season uh, but don't worry we are going to be interacting with everyone via our social media networks so if you have not um, followed us on Instagram or subscribe to us on YouTube or followed us on Facebook, please pause the video or the podcast right now and go do that because you're going to forget and then you're going to miss out on all the greatness we have for, um, for you guys over the summer. Um, so yeah, so the last six months have been great and we want to continue to give you content that is engaging and uh, things that will help you get to know us. Um, and keep you sane and positive and all that greatness. Um, let's see. Um, okay, so with race and race relations, the topic that we are dealing with now, um, we thought that it would be interesting to talk to you about how that has affected our health um, and where we've come from, especially as we've moved from another country to here and our perspectives on that. Um, I'm saying a lot of arms, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so I just realized that I do that a lot as I try to think about what exactly I'm going to say. And we've talked about that before. Anyway, so um, the, com the conversations that we've had as a group have stemmed around, oh, our beliefs on how health has affected or our, our how health has affected us and um especially now that with covid happening we uh -huh. want to identify things that will make us better um the biggest conversation that we've been having right now is uh the various as aspects of, of how racism has affected us and especially how it affected our health because we haven't as much as the protests and um, how we are trying to fight for equal rights have taken over mainstream. We also can't forget that COVID's an issue and it's the surging in cases have become an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but we just wanted to share our experiences as immigrants, how we've already viewed our health and how we can continue to um, how the changes in race and race relations and health and health the healthcare system in America can, can are, have changed our outlook on the health aspect of the environment. So, um, I guess I wanted to share with you a backstory of my experience with health and healthcare system oh, in oh, America. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty lengthy story, but anyway, before I started that, I just need to. For our podcast listeners, I do need to still do a roll call. I keep forgetting that. But anyway, let's do roll call. Kara, I'll start with you. I'm here. Shar. I'm here. 
Sophie. Here. Okay, so I guess let's get into the conversation about health. Um, backstory, when I was living in Jamaica um, and I got pregnant with my first child, I got really bad morning sickness. Well, what I thought was morning sickness. Um, and when I was, I was living in America prior to that, I um, had hives. I had really bad hives and mm. couldn't figure out what the issue was with the hives. Went to many doctors, but I also didn't have health insurance at the time. So trying to go to many doctors and try to figure that out was really difficult. But um, I went to one doctor who said I had, oh uh, my God, what is it called? I forget. Anyway, it's where I am allergic to cold temperatures. Um, so started treating that, went back to Jamaica, had no issues with hives. Then I got pregnant and got really bad morning sickness. And so bad, I was sitting on the toilet with a bucket. <laughs> So coming up in both directions, um, I know, <laughs> not fun at all. Um, went to the doctor early on um, and the doctor did a couple tests. I guess they're regular tests. I don't know. Anyway, my, my levels were really out of whack when it came to my thyroid. So he was like, you know, we need to do more tests with regards to that. You know, your TSH levels are ridiculous your t4 levels are ridiculous we need to take a look at that come to find out ended up having uh, graves disease which is a thyroid condition um ended up going to see an endocrinologist work with the endocrinologist so it, it she was an endocrin endocrinologist that was jamaican based but she also went to the u.s once a month i want to say um so she worked both in the u.s and in jamaica so I could only see her at specific times, et cetera. But she was really good at explaining to me, really good um, at saying, this is what you probably need to do. Let's just see if it's just during pregnancy. Let's treat it, et cetera, et cetera. So I was seeing my um, OBG and also seeing the endocrinologist while I was pregnant. Went through the pregnancy. It was terrible. I don't know who told me to get pregnant again. It was terrible. <laughs> Crazy. Lost my whole mind. <laughs> um, sick all the time. The medication did help. Um, and she tapered me off of it once I had, um, once I gave birth, she tapered me off of it and I was semi fine. Um, came to the States, hives started back. So I figured it had nothing to do with the graves, but then saw an endocrinologist and she's like in the States and she was like, yeah, you know, it's all connected, et cetera, et cetera. Went to an, another endocrinologist because I had moved and then the endocrinologist kept adjusting my medication. And one point I, I started being able to regulate myself knowing when it was too high, when it was too low, cause you kind of started reading your body. Um, and then, um, so after I kept seeing her at one point, she said to me, you know, at this point, you're just going to burn out your thyroid, which is a good thing. And I'm looking at her like, how can that be a good thing? That cannot be a good thing because then anyway, it can't be a good thing. <laughs> so I stopped going to the endocrinologist, spoke to one of my coworkers who had the same condition. She actually had cancer and she's like, you need to, they're not going to tell you this, but you need to start dealing with um, your like your illnesses with how you are, what you're putting into your body and you need to look at natural remedies. Now, at no point did any of my endocrinologists say this to me. At no point did anybody say this to me. Of course, at that point now I'm like, okay, so she's like, you need to come off of this. You need to stop eating this. You need to do this. I'm going to put a thing together for you, blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking at the list like, no, I'm good. <laughs> this is not happening. But anyway, let's start one thing at a time. So I started coming off of the gluten, <clears throat> went off gluten. So ended up being gluten-free, actually being gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, realized that gluten-free, dairy-free wasn't enough. Started doing my research, came off of soy completely because soy to me is worse than gluten and dairy. Came off of soy, came off of gluten, came off of dairy, was eating meat, everything else. 
and then realized that fish was also affecting that. So now I'm no gluten, no dairy, no soy, no fish. Um, and I am on no medication. <laughs> So to me, that is a step in the right direction, but nobody was telling me these things. Mm -hmm. So unless you go and you find the information yourself or you surround yourself with people who are in the same boat as you who are trying other things, it isn't, it isn't something that is, comes naturally. It's not like people are versed in different areas. In addition to that, it's not like I went to my, um, my insurance company and said, Hey, I want to do this. And they're like, okay, as you're looking at that, also know that you have options for this. They don't care. The doctor don't care. The doctor just wanted me to burn off my thyroid so that I could be on medication forever. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to become healthy, not be dependent on medication. Um, but that's what they care about. Anyway, I said all that to say that the healthcare system in America, although it was better than the healthcare system in Jamaica, because in Jamaica, I mean, not to say that you can't get great health care in Jamaica, but it depends on who you are, all kinds of things. There are lots of variables. So even though it's better than the healthcare system in Jamaica, it really isn't set up to help me. It isn't set up to say, okay, here are multiple options. It's you have a doctor, you kind of do your research, a doctor seems to have great reviews, blah, 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 blah. You assume that they're going to have your best interest in mind when really they may not have your best interest in mind. They care about the pushbacks they're getting for medication. They care about tons of things outside of just you. And yes, they care about you, but all the time they don't. So I just have to keep remembering that. And especially when it comes to the situation as it is right now, as we find out information about COVID and as we find information about other things that keep popping up and how it affects um, us as African-Americans, quote unquote, us as black people, um, we just have to keep in mind what is important to us um, and how our health is affected by all of it and how the healthcare system is set up for us. Anyway, I'm going on and on and on. Anybody else have any, Has do you have any um, stories or any insight into how you are dealing with your health um, and how the healthcare system be, being set up the way that it is has affected you? I know that my, um, my doctor, my doctor now in America, I really, really, really like you. And even though he's literally all over the place and if I want to see him, I have to wait. I really like waiting for him um, because He's a real natural remedy type doctor. My doctor will have you working out, drinking water, drinking herbs before he prescribe medication for you. And I right. absolutely love that about him. Like whenever we go, like for example, I used to um, struggle with really bad migraines. And um, at first he was like, okay, let's just take, get the regular test out of the way. And we tried that and the migraines were still, then he was like, okay, now you got to change your diet. It's a diet. You just got to change. He, he would not give me medication. He was like, you got to change your diet. And it's for that reason why now I'm a vegetarian, because I realized that salt and meat and sugar were all triggers for my migraine. So salt, meat, sugar, I had to completely cut out of my diet. And now I was getting migraine at least once every single day. Now, the only time I get a migraine is if I'm lacking sleep or if I eat cheese. Now, listen, don't judge me. <laughs> cheese should have been one of those things that should have been cut out of my diet, but pray for me, I'm really working on the cheese. Um, Especially but Jamaican I cheese. Love the uh, any cheese, to be honest, um, triggered my migraine. But I, I just, man, listen, man, we all have that one thing that we're struggling with, right? Well, that's my struggle, I have to admit. But I love that about it because you're right. The system is set up to give you medication. They have to keep the Medicaid, the, the pharmacy market going. It's a, it's a big part of the, the American um, um, system. So if you're not taking medication, it, it affects so many different levels, right? So they, they, they need you, in a way, to be unhealthy so that you can continue popping those pills. They're not going to recommend um, natural remedies or, you know, check your diet. Because 
most times, most of the things that we struggle with, isn't that all? It's all about what you put it in. It's, it's what you're putting in that your body is reacting to. Yeah. So I agree. The system is not built for you to be better. It's not, they don't want to cure you. They just want to control it, right? Yep. So burn out your thyroids so I can keep your medication for the rest of your life. Keep money coming into the system. Nobody wants to cure you. <laughs> yep, Unfortunately, I agree. Really. I'll let Shar round out this question, but um, I would say I don't have any um, I don't have any personal experience. So you know, Misha's story I think was a good example of going through the rungs um, and trying to figure out what works best for you. And so, if I think you are one of the rarities when it comes to a doctor who is naturally based, because I don't think that's the norm. I mean, I love my doctor, but she's super cool. Um, but I've also never had any like, it, like issues. I see her once a year for 15 minutes and it's like, oh, you're great. Have a good day. So wow. she's never really had to help me <laughs> problem solve, right? Anything. Um, but it is as so said, it's like, we all know this. We all know the healthcare system is not designed to prevent. It's designed to, um, manage and mm-hmm. you know, manage sickness, um, but the other thing is something Mish said before, it's like nobody told you these things, but I think as you become more aware, you understand that, you know, it's, it's like garbage in, garbage out, right? Like whatever you're putting into your body, whether that's physically, mm-hmm. emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. emotionally mm-hmm. get out. So I think I've gotten a little bit more hip to that. Mm-hmm. I will also say, I remember in my early 20s, in school, we had to read this book called um, Mama Might Be Better Off Dead. And I remember that book so vividly because it was about the healthcare system in America and the struggle when you don't have good insurance and you are very mm-hmm. ill. And the fact that medical care is the number one reason why people go into debt in America because mm-hmm. you don't have coverage and you need this care. So I remember thinking about that very early on in my 20s. Um, and then, of course, I, I read uh, Rebecca Sloot's book about Henrietta Lacks, and that just changed my whole perspective about Black women in America and distrust for healthcare systems and doctors in general. So that's been my experience with healthcare. I think I've always kind of, you know, not trusted healthcare, but I've also been lucky enough to not really need to tap into that care. So... Go ahead, Char. Um, well, so I kind of, I'm similar to Carrie and I, I, you know, I'm generally, I don't have any medical needs that require me to interact regularly with um, a physician. But one thing I remember when I was growing up in Jamaica is that, and I, I think it still holds today, is Jamaica has superb primary care. Um, really? really? Yeah, so if you go into your doctor's office or if you go into the dentist's office, I've always had, like my pediatrician, I tried to go to, <laughs> I was in college here and trying to go back to Jamaica. For I did too, but I had her forever um, and ever and ever and ever I and ever. Forever and ever. And I mean, and it was a, a doctor that we trusted as a doctor that, you know, was in the family, like as a practice that had been there for a long time. Yep. So I always remember Jamaica having really good primary care. Now, <clears throat> I have a lot of opinions about, um, not Specialist because of my care. health, but I, yeah, I have a lot of opinions about the kind of health care that you can get, like if it's like emergent care or if you want to go into the hospital to get care. Um, I've had a lot of bad experiences um, for family members, not me. Like Carrie, I show up at my doctor <laughs> once a year, thumbs up. Um, I tend to look at my weight like, Lord Jesus, but. To, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not, like, plagued with any, like, you know, I don't have hypertension. I have very normal to low blood pressure. I don't know. So I, I don't really interact with the medical care um, delivery system a lot. But I do study public health, so I can't avoid it. And, I mean, Carrie was touching on quite a few of those things. And, I mean, I could, so many aspects of um, medicine, um, that's just rigged against um, people of color or um, folks that are disadvantaged. 
Um, mm -hmm. Kara was hinting in college, it was a big thing that so many people were uninsured or underinsured, just didn't have enough coverage for the regular health that regular health care that people would ne necessarily need. Um, and then there was like this big thing, get people, get people on Medicare, get people on Medicaid, get people coverage. It had all these little, these new plans. And now to be honest, if you look at the research, everybody <laughs> has some kind of health insurance. And it's so funny, no, either people still don't have a regular doctor cause they don't find a doctor they can communicate with and trust. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the doctor's not, not speaking their language. Um, not so much their literal language, but more their cultural language, or they don't feel like they have a trust where they can tell the doctor their experience and get something back from somebody who they think is understanding them. Mm. So many people have health insurance or have no health homes. They still go to the emergency room for regular care. Now we're popping up with urgent care centers, and I feel like they are very like disparate with, with, like, with respect to quality. You can have an excellent urgent care, and then you can have some that so terrible mm -hmm. yeah so and then so yeah distrust of the medical system people have health insurance but they're not accessing because they they don't know how to interact with the healthcare systems we have poor relationship with food because of where we grew up and the, the kind of food that's available mm -hmm. to us i mean i would say medical education when i used to work at a uh, medical school that's also a problem trying to teach mm -hmm. um physicians, um, dentists, nurses, clinicians, how to interact um, with different patient populations. Distrust of research. So we don't have anybody in research. We, we have to like, it's hard to get people to participate in research and it's hard to get findings that relate to your <laughs> group. And so then everything that's being fed out, whether it's pharmaceutical or it's evidence-based care or whatever it is, it's not based on you and your experience, because so I mean, yeah, it's go amazing. on and on and on. I and on. That. Um, you, sorry, you were saying. No, I was just gonna round out by I would say my family <laughs> um, approach to healthcare has always kind of been we're gonna go to the doctor where we need someone to cut us. <laughs> so my grandmother is a poultice maker, a tea brewer. <laughs> A herbalist. My mom is like, what you eating? You know, if you don't feel good, what you eating? Yeah. Um, or what hurt, you didn't you eat. You drink water. You yeah. sleep today. You yeah. dehydrate. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I feel like my my family's approach is we go to the doctor, we're good. And that if something wrong in between, you try to figure out what it's kind of like. Do you guys know that? I don't know if it's a documentary or whatever. And I don't know. I don't remember what they were promoting, but there's a thing called forks over knives or whatever where they're like change how you eat before you cut into your body so think, oh. i think it's what everybody is saying right now think about what you put in your body and think about that as the first line of defense before you have to even think of intervening with chemicals or like surgery or procedures or whatever so do you think our culture um is a double-edged sword with regard to that though you did mention the fact that your grandmother is a herbalist, as all all of our parents slash grandparents at this point are, um, your head mm -hmm. hurts, you feel nauseous, go drink some ginger tea, you are doing you do this, drink, they know exactly what to go drink, you know, it, rub some alcohol on your chest there. Listen. You don't have the rum? <laughs> you don't have the rum. And it's great because, <laughs> yes, you don't have to go take two Tylenol all the time, but it's also... I feel like at some point, you know, people might start overlooking things because things that they probably could have caught earlier, they're like, yeah, I've been rubbing some whatever on it, some Cinco Bible on it for the last two weeks. At that point, mm -hmm. ma'am. <laughs> Listen, Cinco Bible could not be working, but they know person A that went to the doctor and this happened to them, so I ain't going. <laughs> So it could have been one bad situation they heard about, but yeah. they're like, I'll just stay here, run, rub the single bag or rub the castor oil and ban it up and see what happens. Yep. Listen, I, I, know. I know so many kids of people who have lost family members because of that same at home remedy. Like I, I know somebody who had an, an uh, uh, issue um, with, with her leg and, and, and it was just like, no man, the leg is fine, man. Just rub it up with some bush and tie it up. And that thing got rubber by tire for so long to the point where the leg was so black 
they all, she almost lost the leg, you know? And honestly, that leg needed medical care, but no man, the leg, all right, just tight up and rub it up. And for years, that's what was happening. So, you know, <laughs> nothing against home remedies, you know, I'm all for it, you know, uh, but at the same time, we also need to be mindful when the doctor needs to be seen, you know? The doctor needs to be called, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yes. For things that are like in between, for so for example, things that are new to us, meditation, aromatherapy, um, things that are um, more popular now than it was before, things that we probably aren't used to. Like if you are going through a depression, your grandmother probably going to say, go open the Bible and read X, Y, and Z, whereas you probably need to... Uh, one, see a therapist, maybe go do some meditation, but here, not knowing about those things, do you think that um, those things should be, like we should know about it, should it be universally covered by health insurance? Um, how do you think our approach is, especially as immigrants, to doing those things? Because, you know, you go see a therapist, we always talk about this, even in the Black community, it's like, I'm sorry, you need to just go pray about it. <laughs> And forget all that. <laughs> eat, eat some good food. Go eat some fried chicken. Pray about it. You, you be I. <laughs> How, oh, what, are your thoughts? what are your thoughts on on like new forms of therapy and our access to that and our um, how we view it? I would say I probably never said the word depression to my grandmother before. Um, so um, I know for her prayer is definitely primary. So I wouldn't say she ever said, oh, you're depressed um, to go pray. Um, I think if it was something Im like immer like something that seemed urgent, whether it was depression, anxiety, or even like real sickness, definitely go to the doctor. But um, I know that whenever she saw me conflicted, right? Or having doubts about stuff, it was certainly sit down, pray about it, seek wise counsel um kind of thing and um as i got older i see the place for you said meditation i don't know much about aromatherapy so i won't say anything about that but but like meditation i see it for many people standing in that same place of a time to be quiet and still and to reflect and to like you know mull over i don't know that i see it as um any kind of treatment for clinical depression. Of course um, anything, not. <laughs> any mood or anxiety disorder. But I, um, so I don't know um, how it would be covered. It would be nice if we would cover wellness things. Um, but I don't know because remember our, med our healthcare system is based when, on diagnosis codes and when you say we when you say it would be nice the US, the US healthcare oh so the US medical and healthcare delivery system is based on like treatment and diagnostic codes so unless they could diagnose you with something unless meditation and aromatherapy can be linked as a part of like a care package maybe and maybe it should be right, right. um <laughs> then that's <laughs> I can't wait I to hear like, what Carrie has to say. Exactly. I was about to say, hold on, Carrie. I feel like she knows aromatherapy things. I don't know. That <laughs> I, don't, I don't know aromatherapy. I don't know. No, no. I think it's to your point, right? If we're trying to build a better system, and I think this current pandemic is like the space where everything is in flux, right? It should be around prevention. Like in... In child welfare, for example, it's the same way. It's just, the system is designed to be reactive. So you end up having a lot of kids in foster care because we're reacting to abuse and neglect versus being preventative and keeping kids in their home and funding prevention programs. It's this, mm -hmm. I look at medical care the same way. Instead of keeping people out of the hospital, funding prevention measures, whether that's aromatherapy, meditation, yoga, whatever it is that's going to impact your wellness overall, then in my mind, a system should be funded to prevent, right? right? But that would require a whole upheaval of corporate big pharma being on board with that. And that's a whole different conversation. 
but the system's not designed that way, but it should be designed that way. Yep, I agree. So if anything. Now I was just gonna say, along with the, the um, medical system, culture also play a role because as I think Shar hinted on this where, um, no, Misha did that there's, for example, the whole depression, they say to you, go read the Bible or go pray. I remember when I had my um, my daughter, for those who know me and know what happened with my daughter, that thing led me into serious depression. And I was scared to even say to my parents that I was depressed. And not that I thought that they wouldn't understand, but that, because I already knew what the result, would have, what, what they would have said to me, which was, pray about it, God understand, he knows what you're going through. I literally went to see a therapist in secret. Like I remember when I went to her the first time and I sat down and she was like, have you spoken to anyone? I was like, no. She was like, where are you still? I was like, I'm by my parents. And she was like, you didn't talk to your mom? I said, no. She said, like, your dad? I said, no. She said, your sister? I said, nobody. You're the first person I'm letting know how I truly feel. And she was like, why? I said, because my mom is going to tell me to pray about it. <laughs> and she's like culture you know the, the it's, i mean yeah. it's nothing wrong i'm not saying anything is wrong with praying about it but i knew at the time that i needed to do a little bit more not mm -hmm. that I, I didn't trust that god would have you know helped yep. me through but i knew I needed help you know and it got to the point where i was so depressed that they wanted to put me on medication but again if you know me i don't do medication right. so they did prescribe medication and i was like no i'm not gonna go on medication i'm gonna get better and I'm going to do what I need to do. And, and I did, but culture also play a major role. Um, cause there are things that it's offered, but because of your culture, you won't take advantage of it because people look down at you or look at you strange, you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I agree. That's um, good, yeah. I'm glad you were able to push back on that. Yep. You know, because culture can be very, it's a strong incentive to do and not do certain things. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of that has to do with us being able as an individual to decipher what's helpful and seeking out what you know is going to work for you. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our parents, our peers, like people can only give you what they have, yeah, right? Right. And so you take it for what it is, but you also understand like, okay, I have to do what's going to work best for me and seek out, you know, what's best practice, what's going to work and make me feel better. Yeah, it's not like my my parents um didn't want what's best. They just don't oh, understand no. that whole yep. concept. Of, <laughs> sometimes yeah, they're, they're a, gonna a, give a, you what they have. have. Right. Yeah. So what they have is go pray about it and read your Bible, <laughs> and yeah. it's fine. I'm not taking away from that. It's fine because prayer did help and reading my Bible did help, but also. Sitting yeah, down with that lady, that. All right. it did help a lot, and 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 she was very helpful to get me out of that space that I was in my life. But um, you know, culture, culture is a big part too. Yeah. You know, as I'm listening to you, Sophie, you know what else I'm thinking too? As a culture, we tend not to talk about certain things, and sometimes calling a thing by a name is so powerful and so helpful, right? And so when you don't have anyone to look to or identify with, like, there's no space for whether it's dealing with mental health issues or even honestly, like even in Jamaica, I remember we used to talk about stoppage of water. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, like there's no name for it and there's no, you don't identify with what's going on. And then, so there's almost like there's no road. So it's good that you were able to make, yep. mm -hmm. call it by its name and get something done because now you have something because many people deal with issues and there's just no reference and no i'm not saying you need to find a reference but it's helpful to find a space right so you now are invaluable to a friend a family member or even your own child when they get older right because you have a different reference and frame of mind right so now we know okay there's sophie so it's like just even having that information uh, right Isn't yep. mm -hmm. the information is very necessary i i believe Th this is kind of what i was talking about before with regard to knowing what you have access to so for example you were saying that you wish that um, wellness was an option 
with my insurance, wellness is an option. Like we get free counseling mm-hmm. sessions and you have all these wellness apps and wellness resources and, you know, they push it at the job, et cetera, et cetera. But everyone doesn't know about it. They, they don't know about this. They don't know about these things and no one's mm-hmm. telling them about these things. Um, mm-hmm. And it also depends on the level of health insurance they have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I also, rem- as Soph was talking, I was reminded about um, even if you are aware of certain things, sometimes as you guys have mentioned also, you get scared. Like I was listening to a podcast about um, COVID and how one guy in the family and their close-knit family got COVID. And he knew he had it. He was trying to get tested. It was really hard to get tested. And then he got really concerned because his brother got sick. And then they're like, okay, well, if his brother got sick, his brother doesn't have insurance. How is this going to work? Are they going to try to find them? Are they going to get deported? Because now one of them is insured and has green card status. The other one is living there. Uh, um, what do you call that? On um, undocumented. Yes, they're undocumented. And mm-hmm. now it's like, what's the issue? So they're going through all of this and they're spreading it all because of fear of lots of things. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess until a few weeks ago, we didn't really have data on the racial the racial data when it came to COVID. Um, and now that we have, um, it seems coincidental that once, once we realize that Um, people of color were disproportionately affected by COVID, all of a sudden it's like, okay, so (laughs) let's Uh, open back. We're good. It's not really affecting us anymore. Yes, we were just talking about that. Before it was a pandemic, shut down the country, shut everything down. Everybody's going to stay inside and don't move. Oh, wait, who are we affected? All right, everybody, it's not that bad. The numbers lie they just exaggerated the numbers go back to doing what you were doing really now yep i mean and we realize that (laughs) no seriously though and i mean i won't say i won't say that people are doing this out of spite but it's really not set up for us it's real once people feel like oh it's not really affecting me because before everybody was scared because it was affecting everybody I mean, it was affecting some mm-hmm. kids, maybe not really, but then it was affecting everybody. And then when you realize that that people of color were get dying from the disease at twice the rate, then it became, okay, so it's not really affecting us as bad. Only whatever proportion of us are dying. I think we could manage this. Then it became a whole different conversation. And I mean, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I mean, we kind of have to look out for ourselves. We kind of have to make sure that we are setting ourselves up for success and making sure that the information that is given to us is one that we really need to receive. Uh, Shari, you were going to say something. I know. I was just going to say the media is like... Mm, Media. You know, Mm. yes, we're (laughs) dying at at twice the rate that we're probably infected, but we're not dying the most, you know, like if our rates 25%, the other 75% is them. But it's so funny how they spin the story. And you're very right. Based on the story they tell everybody like, oh, I don't care no more because it's not me dying. Do you know what I'm saying? But yes, you are, um, sir and ma'am. <laughs> you are dying. And you're dying at a higher rate than we are. It's just that our rate is disproportionate to our rate of right. illness. Right. So, they need to tell the story the right, right way because the way the facts are, we like yes, you're still dying, you're still dying, yeah. you're still dying at a higher rate. Um, it's just not proportionate to your um, representation in the population, right. which is the case for every almost every single thing, right? Even if we don't get infected as uh, as at a higher rate, we certainly are dealing with the the, the follow at a higher rate. Um, so it's the same story. It's sad. Yep. It's the same you know, story. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I, this may be another off topic, but I, I saw this young lady that I have not seen in a long time. We're, we're from the same little spot in Jamaica. And I saw her over the past weekend, and she was out just hanging about. And I, you know, she recognized me. I didn't recognize her. But long story short, I said to her, you know, how are you coping with COVID? And she was like, with what? 
Some of them are like, no, if you don't know anything else, you've heard the word COVID, right? And she was like, girl, I don't believe that thing is really happening. Uh-huh. And, I, and I looked at her and I said, you're one of them? You can't be serious. <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> oh, she was like, I don't believe in no COVID. It's not COVID. It's something else. And they're trying to get, I said, you know what? Stop. I said, listen, I don't know what you know. All I know is a lot of people I know that was perfectly fine are now dead. Now, I don't know how, what, I wasn't there, but I know they're dead. So what are you calling it, COVID or something else? There's definitely something. She's like, you can believe whatever you want to believe, but I'm not going to lie to you. I should walk away because I'm looking at this person. I'm saying to myself, why am I talking to you again? I can't believe I never tell you all this story. I want to say the name, cast the name, but it's somebody we all know, and I will tell you the name after. But the <laughs> situation, Sophie, I swore blind that this person would be like locked up in the house, paranoid. No, they're like, no, no, no. So I'm like, um, I know people who had COVID. I know people who died from COVID. I have students who had COVID. I have students who, I'm like, no, 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 something goes on. They're like, no, man, it's a flu. And I'm like, I mean, okay, but I'm just telling you that flu has been around for years. And I'm telling you, I know people who are standing strong after flu and COVID and now we have funeral. I'm just like, it's... What can I just say? I think some of that... It's like a conspiracy. But I think some of that distress is just general distrust. Like sometimes you don't know what to believe from the government. And if you're being... And I use the word term, I use the term government, right, as a yeah. overarching, the people Media, responsible for safety and health. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard <laughs> to be a, a diligent consumer of information when we know we don't get the full story. We don't. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. people were saying something is going on while we're here looking at COVID and oh. all of a sudden Black Lives Matter. What's really going on? Like, 100%. I was just saying this last night. I was like, I wonder what yep. laws they passing right now. Because something yep. got yep. up. Okay. Something got up. We were saying, like, why did this, this um, try to keep us away from focusing on? There must be some underlying issues. Something else. Look. Something else. They got so, distracted. Um, you have people that have personally died and you've been personally impacted. I, I'm not saying that I 100% agree, but I can understand right. the skepticism right. about what this really is. Right. You know? Yeah. I, yep. just, I agree. I, I know for sure. I don't know what do you want to call it, COVID or whatever. There is definitely something out there. Okay. That much I know. For sure. Strong, uh-huh. strong lady going about our business. Got work, come back home sick and just dead in the three days. No. Uh-uh. Something is out there. Yeah. Yep. So you call it whatever you want to call it. Outside of uh, um outside of staying inside the house and I guess doing your natural covering, what cultural practices have you guys taken into trying to prepare yourself for COVID? And I know girl yes y'all was lit the first like month of this like isolation the onion. WhatsApp... did we talk about the onion we yes. talked about the girl, onion what's up was lit there were recipes left right and center and things you must do and you have to drink term turmeric yes. tea yes. and ginger what are you kidding me yeah I, have I even have a little concussion that my friend's mom made for me and anytime my throat tickle i'm like <laughs> i need something <laughs> <laughs> and it don't taste good. It has moringa and garlic <laughs> and any hand has everything mm. in it. Mm-mm. And I just put it there. And anytime I don't feel good, I'm like, my auntie make me so- I'm gonna have some of this. It's gonna make me feel better. <laughs> Shame. Carrie, I feel like your mother must have the some concoction. The mother only thing I did differently <laughs> increase on my vitamin C. That's it. Mm-hmm. My mother and my sister sent me every recipe known to man. <laughs> Oh, well, only and then this, I said, listen, I, no, the <laughs> only thing I have to admit, the only thing I did was double up on my vitamin C and of course, stay in, of course. Yeah. Uh, that, this, leave it up yeah. to my mother. 
My mom is not a herbalist. Like, well, I won't say that. She's not a concoction person, but she's a person who believes in natural food. She's one of those people that's always said, cook good food, give your kids, they'll be healthy and smart. That's that's always been her thing. And so she's cooking, she's doing what she always does. Um, but she's also boiling a lot of, right? Like leaf tea, sawasap leaf, king of the forest, uh, everything you can think of. Right. Forest. I've never heard of that one. Look now. Wait, which one you haven't heard of? Which one? King of the forest. Yeah, I haven't heard of that either. <laughs> New <laughs> to me. First of all, the fact that Carrie can drink Cersei tea and like drink it without nothing in it, no. The, oh, yeah. that I can you have can... the tea bag. The tea bag isn't nope. so bad, but the it's real bush bad. one I can't mm-hmm. really have. Mm-hmm. My grandma it's used bad. to have me drink a ton of Cersei. She'd be like, yeah, why are you skin pretty? Like, okay. <laughs> So that is true. Listen, well, it works. Maybe oh that's why right. my skin is not pretty. So I need to drink it. some Cersei. I refuse <laughs> to drink it. it. That's all she has to say. Can I drink it now? Can I start now? <laughs> yeah. Listen to your grandmother. It's never too late, child. Okay. I get to Listen, it. Nobody have time for all those concussions, though. Thank I'm God for my you. auntie. So I have a little something, mm-hmm. something in my fridge. I have none of those things. I haven't done anything differently. All so I live much. by is gummy vitamins. <laughs> not gummy vitamins. That I have not been taking. I get the gummy vitamins. vitamins work? Girl, they have gummy vitamin C, gummy vitamin B12, D3. So I'm good. <laughs> those are not good vitamins. You said they're not one. Vitamins. I don't know. I used to take those gummies, but they tasted like candy. I'm like, it's not doing nothing for my body, but <laughs> <laughs> they tasted good, but I just knew. I'm like, this Listen, ain't good. I've been taking my gummy vitamins for the last three months. No COVID. So I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> it's not the gummy vitamins that's been helping you. <laughs> I don't know if I put all that on the gummy vitamins. <laughs> no. It's not the gummies. Uh-uh. It's but not- that's- told me that the gummy vitamins aren't the best. He actually said that to me. Because I used to take gummy and he was like, honestly, it's a waste of time. It's sugar. <laughs> he was like, you do get something. It's better than nothing, yeah. but it's not the best. But it's, you get the something plus sugar. Is the gummy vitamins for kids or is it for adults? Adult. They have adult Come on, for adults. <laughs> I don't take no supplement. I just, I am, I'm so skeptical when it comes to everything because I realize that there are certain things that affect other things. Like if I take too much B12, then it affects my hormones and then obviously that affect my thyroid and blah, blah, blah. So I just don't, I stay away from mm. everything. Ever, I was taking that one thing that, ch- what were you, what did you, did you suggest to me that one time? Those little, oh, the, um, the beadlet, the essential oil thing. With Child, the oil I can pull it up right now from off of my dresser. It's still there. You know. <laughs> I forgot to take that too. I should start taking that too. You see? Mercy. <laughs> I'm just, uh, listen, I'm generally a healthy person. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I it, don't know. That's how I, I feel too. Whatever works for your body. I will say though, so I I also want to, before I forget, shout out Wendy, a uh, good friend of mine, went to Rutgers. Um, this is, she's a listener, shout her out all day. Thank you for listening. She, um, it would be a great idea to do something if we talked about health, but she put me on to bio. It's like, it has to do with your stomach by, um, culture. Like you take something that's supposed to regulate your, um, your okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it like yogurt? No, it's not yogurt. It's a, it's like a, it's like a vitamin, but it's specifically for the microbes in your stomach. Okay. That's supposed yeah. to help your, like, help your system. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she said it's really good. It really works for her. I am very regular. <laughs> One thing that I have, um, that I have discovered, and I have to, I can now swear by it because it's been really good. It's no, none of those vitamin things. It's fever grass tea. Let me mm-hmm. tell you, if you're stressed and you need your heart rate to calm down, drink a cup of healer grass tea. Oh, yeah. It is really good for stress. Mm-hmm. Anytime you feel like your heart rate is too fast and you need to calm down, 
And I don't mean the tea bag, I mean the real people. Chow, where are we going to get this? We have to go to Jamaica, go cut down enough bush and oh, bring it back with we. What are y'all oh, talking no. about? Don't br- lemongrass, lemongrass. Listen. Yes. Americans, lemongrass, tea <laughs> famous, tea <laughs> grass, <laughs> whatever. Um, I, have, I, I always bring home, so I have so much at my house, but it, it mm-hmm. is really, that thing calms down and put you straight to sleep. Okay. Someone explained it to me, and I was like, "Really?" And I drank it. I was like, "Wait, say what now?" Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. we put together a list of all. Always have the tea bag, but yeah. So the, in my world, the tea bag doesn't work at the actual um, bush itself. Because that have makes both sense. Because the bush is fresh, yeah. freshish. The the tea bag is obviously processed to make sure it's in a, right. in a bag. But still, right. that's like when my mother say, drink the ginger tea, man, you'll feel a little better. But don't, don't use a tea bag in order to go boil some ginger. Ma'am, I ain't got time for that. I'm not feeling well. I just want to put the thing in the bag. What you saying? Misha, ginger tea is easy to make. What? Yeah, that, yeah, that's I'm, the easiest one, actually. Yes, I'm about to say that. that it, at the same time as a tea bag. <laughs> no, with a tea bag, you boil some water. The, don't you have to peel the ginger? No. 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 Ginger really Crush. good. And squash it. Peel the Here there. Here there. That's not too much step already. Oh, God. <laughs> Too much step already. Turn on the stove. Pour the water <laughs> in onto the tea bag. Drink. Step three steps. Oh, Una start yeah. hot bowl, rinse off ginger, mush up, muddle the ginger, lick it. No, eh, mm, 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 mm. I'm it's done lazy. With no man. Yes. I don't want to feel better. It's clear. It's, no, I want clear. to feel better while not doing anything. Ah. One of y'all want to come do this for me? I want to be lazy and feel better at all at the same time. That's like wanting okay. somebody to work out for you and you lose the weight. Like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> if that is a thing, I would be at the front of the line, okay? <laughs> front <laughs> of the line. I am not playing games. I don't play, listen. I am focused. I cannot. It needs to be a balance. Anyway, ladies, we're running out of time. Let's start getting everybody's um like their takeaways. What are your thoughts regarding the topic? Um, I guess let's start with Soph. Um, what are your takeaways from today? Do not rely on the healthcare system to cure you. Um, read for yourself. Find natural remedies. Um, pay attention to your body. Again, for the most part, what you put in is what you get now. If you put in garbage, you're gonna get out garbage. So you know, be be responsible about your own health. Now that, that's my takeaway. Be responsible for your own health. Cool. Care. Um, I think. Uh, so I agree with Soph. I think those are those are part of the, part of my takeaways. But I also would add, you know, if you're it's hard to put in healthy food if you're if you can't afford it. Like everyone can't necessarily afford it, and food stamps don't always cover fresh food, right? So connecting with your local like community gardens is um, actually one way that may be great to get fr- access to fruits and veggies, um, local food pantries, and in terms of people without healthier coverage, because a lot of people don't have healthier coverage. Seeking free or reduced cost healthcare coverage at like your local, you know, health center, federally funded health centers. Um, all of that to say, I think we want to acknowledge that it's not always easy to access the things we need that are best for our bodies. But there are some resources out there, so I think I'd encourage people to tap into those as best they can um, to support their health overall. Um, so yeah. Oh, sure. sure. Um, so yeah, I'm going to steal from Soul, steal from Karen, and then I'm just going to add um, to actually picking back off what Soul said is feel comfortable looking up information um, about your health and feel comfortable knowing that you don't know everything about your health and try to feel comfortable seeking the information um and don't feel like if you go to a doctor and they're not listening and you're not getting through you don't have to give up uh, you know you Mm -hmm. might have to try a second or a third doctor before you find a place that works best for you but Mm -hmm. um i don't think it's fair it's unfortunate we have to do this but it's don't do without because of um 
you know, an experience at a doctor's office or an experience somewhere, you know, you have a right to get good health care. You have a right um, for someone to listen to you and respect what your experiences are. So I always say, like, advocate and try, you know, like, don't give up. Try again um, and seek out. I think if you start with community health centers, you'll find some, um, you'll find clinicians that have a passion for working in communities. So I think, yes. I'm, I'm advocating, in addition to, of course, being mindful of what we put into our bodies and recognizing that we have a role to play in our health. Just know that when you're interacting with the medical system, you know, you have a right to get good health care. And if you're not getting it where you are, you don't have to stand for it. You can go and find someone that um, will respect you and your views. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to round that out to say, <clears throat> don't give up on, well, bring over all your knowledge of what is modern medicine with the cultural knowledge that um, our parents, our grandparents brought. <clears throat> Sorry, there's a reason why we didn't get medication <laughs> as slaves wherever we come from, and it worked. Um, and of course, they, the medicine that they've developed since then that that also helps so no try to figure out what's good for you there is a balance sometimes you have to drink your ginger tea and sometimes you have to model it and then other times you really need some medication so knowing <laughs> knowing when that is and knowing your body and getting to know that know your body and getting to know when to draw the line um is important um we do just to close mm-hmm. everything out we do want to thank everybody um, I know my family watches religiously. I don't know that they have a choice, but they watch religiously. My father will call me <laughs> on Thursday, like, oh, you're not send the link yet. <laughs> oh. um, and I know, I know that you're, you guys, I can speak for you guys when I say that our family and friends have really uh, stepped up and, and showed, shown their um, support for us. And even people that we don't know have reached out to us to say, oh, this is information that I never had before. Mm-hmm. It's a new perspective, et cetera. And that was the point, just to have these conversations outside of just our circle and maybe helping, maybe just putting a new lens on it. And we really appreciate that we went six months of having these conversations and you guys were engaging and <laughs> being willing to listen to us for an hour each week, well, every other week. And we will be back. We will be doing these and we'll try to make, we'll try to improve. I mean, as the season went on, we improved on our technology. We got video. We got graphics. Who's to say what's going to happen next season? So I have a studio. Okay. uh, Listen, you never, I might win the lotto and I can fly everybody in. So every other week. Every other, I'm all for it. The PG send it. Listen, <laughs> every other week, okay. Anyway, we we have many ideas of how we we want to connect with you guys, and we are grateful and we're looking forward to all of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, see you on Instagram, Facebook, maybe Twitter. We'll see. Just connect with us. And- Yep, we'll have many options to connect, so stay tuned. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>